abundant energy in harmony with nature, zero emissions, never burn anything by Larry Hartwig. Before humans, animals did not need fires. They lived well off of the great bounty of the land and sea and evolved into more intelligent beings over time. Geologic records suggest that pre-homo sapiens learned to make fire on demand roughly 800,000 years ago. Fire plus clothes allowed tropical beings to migrate to colder climates. They learned that cooked meat was easier to digest. They burned the ends of poles to make the first pointed spears, which improved hunting productivity. The oldest known caveman art was drawn with campfire charcoal. Fire created dazzling light shows that became the focus of cultural development, rhythmic drums, fertility dances, and spiritual beliefs. Campfires helped bind tribes together. When there were fewer than a million humans, fire had little impact on Earth's environment. But, as human population exploded, burning anything has become a totally unsustainable primitive energy policy. Humans have existed on Earth for many thousands of years, but in only 150 years, humans have destroyed half of Earth's life-giving trees, while human population has exploded over six-fold. At the current rate of killing trees and expanding population, humans will suffocate in the 21st century. We know that when carbon dioxide content of the air we breathe reaches only 1%, it becomes immediately lethal to oxygen-breathing beings. This chart documents deadly trends. The yellow line shows human population is exploding exponentially, while the horrifying green line shows how life-giving trees are being destroyed at an accelerating pace. Oh More people and fewer trees declining oxygen to breathe, and more people needing to breathe it. As we progress from axes to saws to chainsaws to logging machines that kill 170 trees per hour, we are bringing about irreversible biodiversity extinction that can only lead to human suffocation. The only real question is when these trends must be immediately reversed. Slash and burn clearing of forests to make room for man-made urban deserts contributes greatly to the destruction of life-giving green forests. The trend is absolutely unsustainable. If left unchecked, it could kill all of our children who are alive today. We must stop burning anything if humanity is to survive for long. All of Earth's 6.7 billion humans would each have to plant dozens of new trees every year to reverse the current trends. Gigatons of man-made emissions from foolishly burning, badly polluting fuel sources have already had a dramatic impact on Earth's climate. It is not just a matter of ice caps melting and flooding our coastal cities. It is a matter of total human annihilation in this century by 1% CO2 saturation suffocation unless we immediately wake up to the damage already done and radically reinvent society with a never-burn-anything policy that is enforced worldwide. Reducing emissions is just not enough. We must learn to never burn anything. No wood, biomass, coal, oil, gas, or any kind of bio fuel. From an outsider's perspective, earthlings must appear to be total non-learning, unevolved entities. For decades, we've had zero emission, clean, green, free fuel technology, but our corrupt energy politics still clings to more expensive combustion of deadly, declining, unsustainable fossil fuels. How dumb can humans be? Clean and green, sunshine, wind, hydroelectric from rain, tides, and currents, and geothermal energy are abundant gifts that are totally free in one form or another everywhere on Earth. We demonstrated cost-effective technology to harness all of them decades ago. Taken together, they offer well over 10,000 times more energy than all of the fossil fuels being burned today. 10,000 years ago, the Chinese began mining coal. They burned coal to cook, heat buildings, and to melt metals. In areas of dense use, unsustainable, deadly byproducts of burning coal turn the sky black. 2,600 years ago, Lao Tse wrote in chapter 39 of the Tao Te Ching, which means the way, In harmony with the way, the sky is clear and spacious. The earth is solid and full. All creatures flourish together, content in the way they are, endlessly repeating themselves, endlessly renewed. But when man interferes with the way, the sky becomes filthy. The earth becomes depleted. The yin-yang equilibrium crumbles, and creatures become extinct. 
we must all learn to live a sustainable lifestyle in harmony with nature. Since the 1970s, we've had the technology to never burn anything. We must overcome our current bad politics and make it happen today. All coal burning is deadly. There is no clean coal technology. There are some coal burning technologies that are dirtier than others, but all coal burning technologies emit a large amount of deadly toxins. Reducing emissions is only a small step. Our goal must be no coal. Two billion humans regularly burn wood and other biomass to cook and heat their homes. It is destroying CO2 sequestering trees, emitting unhealthy toxins, causing respiratory disease, lung cancer, and contributing significantly to man-made climate change. Soot from Asian and African biomass fire is covering ice caps and accelerating melting. Burning anything is obsolete, primitive caveman thinking when sun and wind are abundant, clean, and free. Americans must stop burning imported, expensive, highly polluting oil to heat their inefficient homes. This spectacularly stupid practice began when heating oil was less than 20 cents per gallon. At today's prices, it is not only deadly, sending hundreds of billions of dollars in jobs overseas, but it is downright double dumb. 25 states rely on expensive, dirty, unsustainable heating oil. Our federal government foolishly subsidizes this terrible stupidity. Burning natural gas is somewhat cleaner than wood, coal, or oil, but gas, which is three-quarters methane, still emits deadly toxins and fine particulates that cause lung cancer and brain damage, in addition to accelerating man-made climate change. We should not waste time, money, and effort converting to natural gas, when our strategic position must become never burn anything. What does green mean? Anything that burns anything is not green. There are no exceptions. All byproducts of atmospheric combustion emit harmful pollutants that damage our delicate environment and the health of everyone nearby. Some people incorrectly think burning hydrogen is green. Hydrogen plus oxygen equals pure H2O water. But hydrogen burns very hot. When burned in the atmosphere, hydrogen combustion causes the 78% nitrogen in air to combine with oxygen, producing unhealthy nitrous oxides and nitric acid causing deadly acid rain. Hydrogen works just fine in fuel cells, but burning hydrogen is not scalable. Never burn anything. The easiest, most cost-effective form of free solar heat requires nothing more than equator-facing glass. In many parts of the northern hemisphere, a south-facing sunroom can capture all of the free solar energy that you need to heat your home. Thermal mass is designed in to retain the heat on long winter nights, eliminating the need for burning fossil fuels altogether. Zero Energy Design has been using this inexpensive concept since our first home in 1979. This is a picture of our popular 1982 Zero Energy Design home. After using Southern Glass to capture winter sunshine, the next easiest and most inexpensive way to use free sunshine is for solar hot water heating, from bathing to laundry to dishes, and even indoor swimming pools, as our first Zero Energy Design home did in 1979. With 10 degree snow outside, we swam in a 90 degree indoor swimming pool. Abundant energy in harmony with nature, not energy austerity. When the news got out, we were on television many times, the front page of the real estate section, and the most popular speaker at the large national energy expositions. Most of our simple solution was just well-designed window glass. Our swimming pool even kept our home warm on cold winter nights. After doing everything we can to improve energy efficiency, adding solar space heating and solar water heating, then we can consider producing electricity from sunshine using a variety of emerging new cost-effective technologies whose price is falling rapidly at 17 to 40 percent per year. In 1984, Georgetown University produced a megawatt per day of clean, free fuel, zero emission electricity from photovoltaic panels. Today, large capacity solar electricity is becoming cost competitive compared to building new, reduced pollution fossil fuel power plants. A square of land in the sunny southwest United States that is only 96 miles wide could produce as much electricity as America currently uses nationwide. A new smart grid is needed to distribute sun and wind energy. 
This presentation is continued in part two of two.